Welcome back. So, today we went to the fancy schmancy antique mall, met a viewer, and found some bargains. So, when we come back, we're going to take a look at the bargains we found and meet the viewer. We'll be back in a minute. So before we get started, I have to apologize for the high levels of background noise. Initially, uh, the first film clip you're going to see, I was outside and there was traffic behind me, so there's a lot of background noise. But when I was inside the mall, it's, it's a very hot day and right now it's raining, but earlier today, very warm. Fans were on everywhere to cool things down, but it did increase the background noise. So I apologize for that. Um, I've played the films back. I can hear everything pretty well. Not many problems there, but I have to admit the fan noise is a bit irritating. So I hope you can sort of block it out. All right. First, before I even got into the store, let's take a look at what I saw in the window. Well, we haven't even gotten into the store yet, and already I found an interesting piece. This is a Sheraton sideboard, Sheraton style, let me say, because it's probably not actually an antique. And it's been painted a sort of light teal color. Um, price tag, which I think is $3.95. I will blow this image up when I get it on the computer and see if I'm right about that. Interesting piece, very large. I'm not crazy about painting these beautiful old pieces. On the other hand, I have no idea what's under the paint. They might have had a good reason for it. Well, this piece is a Sheraton style uh, sideboard. No idea what kind of wood is under the paint. One of the reasons I wanted to show this piece is because, as you all know, I prefer wood rather than painted wood. But I've seen some pieces and I can tell there's some pretty significant damage under the paint. There may be extensive wood fill to cover uh, scratches, gouges, etc. You can't always just throw that out as a blanket concept. No, we must never paint things. Well, if the choice is it's going to become firewood if you don't paint it, then I would say, sure, paint it, go ahead. Not my first choice, but I've seen some pieces and that's pretty much the only way to salvage them. And in fact, uh, I actually saw another piece today. I'm sure there was plenty of damage on it and it was beautifully painted. So I'm going to show you that too. All right. So, Fancy Schmancy Antique Store. This is the Carlisle Antique Mall. And this is an antique mall that was, oh, a good two years, maybe more, in the preparations before it was opened up. Um, and really, in terms of the building, the, the aesthetics of this setting, time well spent, in my opinion. And because this is a major building in our little tiny downtown area. Overall, I would have been happy for anything to go into that 
building rather than have this giant three-story empty building there. But I have to say, they did an excellent job. They really did. And I hope you get a chance to see that as we go through how well preserved this building was and the really nice job they did renovating it. So, let's get down to business. I uh, started on the third floor. I decided to work my way down. And, uh, of course, to begin with, I'm looking for small, portable porcelain things. Items that are not going to be expensive to ship, that are not going to be expensive to buy, and therefore are not going to cost buyers a great deal of money. So, my price limit, which is kind of a joke because, you know, I break it whenever I want to, is $10. And I have to say, it's kind of a goal these days more than an actual firm limit. So, I want to start off by showing you a couple of gorgeous pieces of Nippon China. And they are, there would be, they're being sold separately, but they're a match set. So take a look at this. Well, we are up on the third floor, and this is where I've decided we'll start today. So here we go. And I've started off finding some very pretty pieces of Asian porcelain. Nippon pieces, these are there are two of these. This one is $18, and this one is $20. Very, very pretty. Good prices, but out of my little bargain shopping price range. This one, gorgeous. Here, China. At $95, way out of my price range but nice pieces and worth taking a look at because here, this is what you get when you go into a fancier upscale shop. No damage, perfectly clean pieces. Now, I don't know if you can see how thin this rim is, but very thin, not a single chip. So, this is definitely where you go for high quality stuff. Well, those are lovely pieces. Really great. Um, very typical of Nippon China with the, uh, the pale white bowl, the lovely gold designs. Uh, very, very pretty, excellent condition. And then the little uh, Chinese rice bowl that I picked up. That is a particular kind of Chinese porcelain. You know I love that. It's uh, usually green or turquoise. It's stoneware. Very nice. Uh, this bowl, at $95, I would not touch that. It's just, I honestly do not feel that's a good price for this piece. But... It's a really good piece because the, the stoneware is so thin. It's porcelain thin. And that's surprising for pieces like this because usually the stoneware, this is a heavier, more porous porcelain. Um, it's a little rougher. I guess that's the, the most accurate way to put it. Gorgeous stuff, but it's not... Fine China. Uh, that the piece that I saw there, that little ninety-five dollar rice bowl, was porcelain thin, and the condition was perfect. So I would say, yeah, nice piece. Ninety-five dollars? No, I don't think so. But then again, who knows? I would imagine sooner or later they will find a taker for it, especially in a setting like that, where everything is really very high-end. Um, and as I pointed out, 
condition is going to be good on pieces in places like this. It's going to be clean. Um, you're really not going to have to do a great deal of work to take the piece from their shelf to your table. Nonetheless, had to walk away from that. But in that same booth, I found another painted piece. And I really do want you to see this because I think they did a fabulous job. All right, this beautiful uh, sideboard is oak. This is a late Victorian piece and it has been painted. And ordinarily, I am not a fan of painted pieces, but as I've said before, I have no idea what's under the paint that they're hiding. Yes, could be this was the only choice they could make. However, this is one of the best jobs I've seen of painting over older furniture. It really is. Uh, we've got these grapes. It's, this is just a beautifully executed job. Uh, I suspect that because they've done the painting so well, that if there was not something to hide under the paint, they probably would have left it as is. But yeah, if you have to hide a flaw, boy, this is the way to do it. Now the paint job on this isn't exactly trompe l'oeil, but it's very close. Um, it, there, it lacked the three-dimensionality of trompe l'oeil, but still, that was a serious paint job. That is not just, you know, a, some bored guy with a brush. This was an artist that did this job. And I don't know if you noticed the uh, cabinet door on the right had a large uh, horizontal crack running through the door. I have to imagine there was more damage than that. And there was probably um, considerable hidden damage because in fact, that's not the kind of paint job one does casually. You really have to want to preserve the piece when you put that kind of work into it. So, not sure what kind of sins are hiding beneath that coat of paint, but beautiful piece, and I have to say, I'm glad they took whatever steps they, they were going to take, in this case painting, glad they put the work into salvaging it because a piece like that going into a firewood pile would have been a real tragedy. All right, now we walk away from the painted pieces. Um, next up, I ran into a little booth that I've gone into before. Um, I filmed in there for you, so you've seen some things. I've gotten some nice pieces there. And they have a lot of interesting Asian china. No idea why. Um, it's it's not it's not a specialty of theirs. In other words, there are many things there that are not Asian china. But when they do have Asian china, they very often have very nice pieces. So take a look at what I found. I've gotten some interesting bargains here in the past. This cream and sugar set, ah, uh, what are we? We are 1450. Japan piece, yes, it's over my $10 self imposed limit. But boy, is it tempting. I don't know, I've got to think about it. This, however, at $9.75. Japan piece, good sized, as you can see from my hand. But this makes the cut, so this is definitely coming with me. Now we're going to take a look and see if we have other goodies here. 
Well, there was no question, but that sweet little boss was coming home with me. 975 just barely under my $10 cutoff point. The, the cream and sugar set, that was Lusterware, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that when I filmed it. Lusterware, brilliant colors uh, and a really nice color combination, too. That was one I thought, mm, I'm going to have to think about that. Not that far over my price point, but, well, it was over. However, a piece like that, a set like that, um, that's so nice, sure, I can put that into my Etsy shop. Yes, it's going to be a little more expensive than my usual run-of-the-mill sugar and creamer set, but it's a beautiful set, and it's absolutely worth it, uh, given the fact that it's not that far over my price point. It's not like I'm going to have to charge $80 for it. Oh, and by the way, if I charge $80 for something like that, don't buy it. <laughs> like, seriously, don't buy it. Just write me a little note and say, Sue, go back to the doctor. You need your, your meds adjusted. But I thought it was really great, but I did want to give it a little bit of thought. Uh, so I went over to the other side of the booth. And this is where I found uh, another really nice little piece that absolutely, from the get-go, was coming home with me. So let's take a look at that. Well, this piece at four seventy-five is definitely coming with me. It's a lovely blue and white piece. Um, Let's see. I don't see any marking on it. Looks to be, um, well, you know what? Without a marking, I'm not even going to venture a guess because I have seen pieces like this come out of China, out of Japan, and out of England, of all places. However, let me move this piece. Notice how well it goes with standard blue and white plates. So I think this is going to make its way home with me and eventually end up on a tidbit tray. As it happens, I, I have a lot of blue and white china. I am acquiring uh, a stash of it specifically for the purpose of putting together tidbit trays. Most of it is Japanese pieces that are made on more of a Chinese style. What can I say? But uh, one of the reasons I liked that little piece, and I had seen on this trip many pieces the same size, including a lot of interesting grain of rice bowls, one of the reasons I went for it, this little bowl first was that little lip running around it gave it a very different sort of look, something that I think is going to have a, a rather novel look that will be attractive for a tidbit tray. It's going into my stash, and because I have plates very similar to the ones that I, um, I saw in the booth, and I could hold that little um, that little bowl up against those plates for comparison. Yeah, I know it's going to work very well. That was four seventy five. Interestingly enough, that is just about what I pay for pieces like that almost everywhere. So I did not find that at all out of line in terms of a price, and certainly. Uh, in terms of going into an ultra-fancy antique mall, it was quite a bargain. Next up, right in that same area, I saw a very interesting depression glass butter dish. So let's take a look at this. Twenty-four fifty green depression glass 
butter dish. I do not believe this is old depression glass. The shade of green is a little too dark for that. Nevertheless, this is a lovely covered dish. And yeah, we don't serve butter this way anymore. But it would make a great cheese dish, too. Okay, that did not come home with me. At twenty-four fifty, the price was too high. But even if the price had been lower, I likely would have passed it by anyway. The reason for this is that dark sort of hunter green shade of depression glass is newer. The depression glass, now green depression glass, has been around for a long time, and I've done videos about depression glass, so we've talked about this before. Uh, green depression glass is one of the more common colors, been around for a long time, but the earlier pieces are a lighter shade of green. It's a little more of a yellow green, and it's, it's lighter. It, the color is less saturated. So you look at it, and yes, you can see that it's green glass, but it doesn't sort of beat you over the head with its greenness. That one, the color was more saturated, and that's usually an indication of depression glass from the period that is post-1950s. I'm not saying that that depression glass is crap or worthless or anything like that. It's just that it's not the oldest of the depression glass. A lot of companies made depression glass. And, uh, I'm, and it was just ubiquitous, really. Uh, the reason it's called depression glass, and we've discussed this before, is it was very popular during the Depression. So that's when the bulk of the depression glass came onto the market, the 1920s, the 1930s. So if I'm looking at a piece that is 20 to 30 years newer than the, uh, the bulk of the depression glass, I'm going to pass it up. I'm going to go for older pieces first. Older pieces are more desirable, hence more valuable. And they're also, from the standpoint of people who use their depression glass, uh, they're more easy to match with your sets. So, yeah, I'll go for that first. However, I should mention that uh, some of the green depression glass and some of the yellow depression glass, those two colors, often had a significant uranium content. They will glow under a black light and I say this as a caveat, and I know I say it a lot, but if I can save you health problems down the road, I'm not going to be sorry. I'm repeating myself. Uranium glass is pretty. If you want to collect it, fantastic. But if you want to use it for food service, please use it with caution. Please use it sparingly. Please don't be kids out of it. So having said that, um, I do personally like depression glass very much. And I have to admit that I, I have a weakness for the green and yellows. Um, it's just my personal taste. But that was a piece staying behind. There was a great deal of depression glass in the antique mall today. Um, in fact, I saw one table absolutely full of it. It was just littered with depression glass. So it's not hard to find the older pieces. It's really not. And let me know in the comments if depression glass is something you're interested in. Oh, we can do like a whole video on this because I can find it absolutely everywhere. We can, we can just come up with a huge number of pieces to give you examples of what was available and what the prevailing prices are or should be. So let me know if that's something you want me to follow up on. And 
while I was making that video, someone came up behind me and said, Sue. I was like, oh my goodness, okay. And I turned around because, of course, this is my hometown. People do know me here. And it turned out to be one of our viewers who had come all the way up from Athens, Georgia to do some shopping in some of these places locally. So let's meet her. All right. So I ran into Jennifer, one of our viewers who's all the way up from Athens, Georgia. She came up here to check out the fancy, fancy schmancy antique store and Bedford Antiques. So I just told Jennifer I'm buying this set. And as she pointed out, it's two pieces, so it doesn't count. I get to buy it. All right. You got to love people that support your vices like this. Yes. So we met Jennifer. Jennifer and I had a nice chat. She's a very sweet lady. I'm so glad she stopped and said something. She said that it was the sound of my voice. She had been wandering around, had not seen me, but heard me apparently talking to myself while I was making a video. So I'm so glad she stopped. And she did agree with me that at 1450, it was two pieces. So it should count. And as I said, people who encourage my vices, oh my goodness, I could fill my whole life with them and be happy. Yes, the creamer and sugar did in fact come back with me. Um, I, I am comfortable with the purchase. Uh, it wasn't that far out of my price range. And I really do think it's going to find a very happy home somewhere. Too pretty to leave behind, I guess. So that was a wonderful surprise. And keep in mind, if you're ever in the area, my shopping days are usually Thursdays and Fridays. So if you do find yourself running around Thursdays and Fridays, please listen for the sound of my voice. Apparently it's unmistakable and stop and say hello. All right. Finally, we're going to wind up with something gorgeous. And unfortunately, I do not have a price for you on this, but oh my, take a look. Well, look at this gorgeous little Art Deco coffee set. Unfortunately, I have checked every single piece and I cannot find a price tag anywhere. But isn't this just beautiful styling? Mm. Wow. All right. Well, the absence of price tag suggests to me that, you know, if you have to ask, you probably can't afford it. But, wow, I do love this beautiful, beautiful deco pieces. So, is that coffee set something to die for or what? Oh, beautiful art deco set. I could not find a price anywhere. Nowhere. Now, I'm sure it was very expensive because it's lovely. Deco sells and commands high prices. There was service for six, the pot, the creamer, the sugar, the six cups and saucers. Um, yeah, I do think it's one of those, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. But uh, by the same token, I was still glad to get some film of that just so that you can see well so you can see why it is i love art deco so it's beautiful but also so you can see what's out there because the um art deco and we've discussed this before we have a ver very firm start date for art deco uh the paris exposition the summer of 1925. Um, the, the, the term Art Deco comes from that exposition. 
So we know that's when it began. Now, naturally, the influences were around earlier, which means pieces that we would consider Art Deco were also around earlier. In the United States, because it was the 1920s and we didn't have instantaneous communication, it, ideas took a while to cross the Atlantic. For us, it sort of became streamline modern or art modern, and it really came into its own about 10 years later. Still, I thought that was absolutely wonderful. All right, so that finishes us up for today. I have more film because uh, believe me, I got more than just three or four items there. So we're going to follow up on this and um, I'm hoping you will all have something of a better day than we are having here. It is pouring rain and I was very concerned by the way for Audie because I couldn't find him anywhere. It has been very warm. It was even very warm this morning. Suddenly it started raining and it got chilly. Audie blames me for this. When the weather gets bad, especially when it turns suddenly bad, he's convinced I've done this. And it's like, this cat thinks I am the master of the universe. So I was looking around to see if maybe there had been some thunder and I hadn't heard he was hiding under the bed. No, he's asleep in the clothes dryer. So he's safe, he's sound, he's warm, he's cuddled up on a bunch of sweatshirts and he's thrilled. And I'm going to have to get cat hair off. There's clean clothes in the dryer. So I'm going to have to get cat hair off that. I suppose it's my own fault for not taking it out first thing in the morning and folding it, but I didn't. The cat's grateful, but I have some extra work. All right, hope your day is a little better and Please keep your weekend safe. Memorial Day weekend is one of the worst weekends in the year for traffic accidents. So be mindful, stay safe. We'll see you tomorrow.